big shout out to our sponsor, Iowa Floor Covering and their Tough Core Click Together Flooring. We've been touting that for a long, long time, but they'll get you covered for whatever project you have going on in your house. Maybe it's a carpet or tile or tile shower project. Give them a call, 515-379-7000. That's 379-7000 or visit iowafloorcovering.com. Thank you to Iowa Floor Covering down in Bondurant. Pleased to be joined by Elliot Clough of Rivals. Elliot, good friend of mine. He's on the Iowa Beat, hardworking guy. And uh, this is what, year number two officially for you on the Iowa Beat, Elliot? I lose track yeah. of that. No. Yeah, I, yes. <laughs> Role has kind of changed over the last year or so. Is strictly yeah. recruiting when I first started. But now okay. I'm men's basketball and, and football. And um, was at spring practice today, of course. Of course, which we're going to talk about. But yeah, a year ago in January is when I started. So it's been about a year and four months-ish. The luxury I have with doing covering the sport the way I cover the sport from afar and what I would consider to be a, t- a part-time basis is I have the luxury of when the women's basketball season ended, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm taking a three-day hiatus. <laughs> You're like back on the horse. I got to figure out recruiting. I got to go to this event. I got to go to open practice. So thank you for your service. First of all, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't envy it, but you're doing a heck of a job. I want to reason we wanted to get together here is uh, to talk about media availability. There was some open practice or at least a very small window of open practice open to the media. Today, we're recording this on April 11th, uh, Thursday, April 11th. Um, media got to watch. Some reps for the offense and vice versa, and also got to talk to some people. Always insightful stuff. I think the big thing, you you tweeted out some stuff uh, throughout the day that I was responding to as I saw it come in. One of the things was the quarterback competition, and that seems to be every single year the discussion we're having in the spring. Rightfully so, because as you and I both know, the position and the uh, production from said position has been dreadful since Nate Stanley graduated, and that's putting it lightly. I mean, I'll just put the banner up here. People can react to it. It appears, (laughs) it appears that the staff is telling us that Deacon Hill is far and away the better option over Marco Alainez. Now we've still got a week and a half left of practice. We're going to get an open practice. that's open to fans and the media on April 20th. I'll be there and, and hopefully be able to get a sense of where this battle is, but What do you take away from some of the things that were said and what you were able to see from the quarterback position today? Well, um, what I'll, what I'll say is that for those, I'm assuming they know what you're alluding to uh, today. Deacon told media that he's been taking the majority of the snaps of the one. That's what we saw in practice today as well. Um, he was he was getting reps with the ones and we got 20 minutes of time at practice. So, again, take take some of what I say with a grain of salt just because of how much I was able to see. It's a small sample size. Um, and I, I mean, you know how much this staff values experience one. Right. Whether it's positive experience or negative experience. And that's probably what they're leaning towards here with Deacon. Also. Whether it's positive or not, KF likes how guys can command a locker room. And Deacon can do that, too. Deacon's very personable. I like Deacon a lot. The thing here with Marco is the lack of experience. We haven't really seen him throw a consistent ball. Not that we've necessarily seen that from Deacon, though we know he has a cannon. And... Kirk is going to go with what he's familiar with, and that's that's Deacon Hill. And Tim Lester is going to have influence on that, right? Like any coach will with their head coach, but the head coach is ultimately, ultimately going to make the decision. Do I see why or can I put two and two together as to why Hill is apparently QB1, right? QB1 right now, um, QB2. Yes and no, because I think it is the familiarity. I think that's that's just what KF goes back to, right? I mean, I, I think that's that's his, that's almost his MO. Um, and at the same time, we have to look at this from a vantage point of, okay, Cade's going to be expected to be back in June. Like, 
Deacon isn't expected to be QB1, though it almost seems inevitable that Cade's going to get hurt as well. Of course, you don't want that. Of course, you don't uh, want to say you expect that. But he's been hurt three, four years in a row now. Um, so as much as you've talked about the portal with with Mark, our, our friend Mark, um, it, it and as much as we've talked about the scholarship issue of them being over, which they still are, you have to you, like. There's no if ands or buts about it. You have to go get a QB two in the portal. If it's not, if it's because there's tiers, right? People can put players into tiers, and it's not even like Cade is is one A amongst quarterbacks in the country, right? Cade Cade's, I would say an average to slightly above average college quarterback. And then there's like four tiers and then there's Deacon Hill. I was doing some research for an article today and Deacon literally ranked last in passer efficiency, passing efficiency in the country this last season, 106th. It's not even close, um, is it? Is I it even close? So. <laughs> I, I didn't look at the the measurements, but I did 106th. And the passing, uh, like the, uh, they ranked in passing offense 127th. And the only teams that were below them were like Air Force who runs a triple option. So like now it should be made clear that neither one of us is ripping Deacon Hill. And I, I have always said, I place a large amount of the blame, not just with Deacon Hill's struggles, Spencer Petrus' struggles, etc., on who was coaching that position. That's my opinion. I don't want to make Brian Ferentz the scapegoat, but these are kids that you see a trend from individual to individual. I go back to coaching. And so Tim Lester should be given a chance to develop each and every one of these kids, even though they're not his recruits, Elliot. And you mentioned that before we started recruiting. My, my only issue, and we're not there every day, the first thing you said, experience. So let me be devil's advocate for all the the fan, or I should say for uh, in behalf of the fans that are frustrated, even by your simple tweet today, and it's not your fault, but here's the tweet. Right, you right. said, uh, Deacon Hill's getting reps with the ones at quarterback, spoke with Deacon in media availability following practice, told me he's receiving the, quote, majority of the reps with the ones, quote, if not all of them. So here's the only issue. If, if the fallback is indeed experience, the common fan and even myself would say, well, how do you gain experience if you're not given the opportunity to gain experience? Also, the commanding of the locker room, is that to ensue then or to imply that Marco Linez cannot command a locker room? Um, I would be surprised by that, but I'm not there every day. Now, as it relates to his throw, I know Chad Lysko tweeted something out today and used the term ugly ball as it relates to... Uh, the Marco Linez spiral, I guess. You guys got about five minutes of exposure, I think, to practice today or or to throwing um, drills, I guess. Maybe he does have a... I know that's the common narrative on social media and on the message boards. I don't know where these things start, if it's people leaking it with, from within the program. That's been the narrative, the popular narrative all spring that Marco Linez can't throw. And it doesn't help that he went two of six against Tennessee in the Citrus... Or two of seven against Tennessee in the Citrus Bowl. That doesn't help. So I just, I, I guess the reason I'm kind of ranting here for a second, Elliot, is because assuming all this is true and and Marco's got excellent legs, but he can't throw, he can't hit the broadside of a barn. This is his first spring, but he can't hit the broadside of a barn. What does that say about Iowa's ability or lack thereof to, I won't even say develop quarterback play because you have a new OC, but the struggles Kirk and his staff have had with, uh, evaluating quarterbacks out of high school because, you know, having an ugly ball and a, a spiral that's not very tight, you'd think that would be something that would be easily discerned when you're looking at a guy in high school. Yeah, you can watch a kid throw on air like we did today and, and discern that. Um, and I think what a lot of this goes back to, and it's it's the name that everybody likes to go to and and that you just referenced is Brian Ferentz, who was an offensive lineman coaching quarterbacks and evaluating quarterbacks. And I honestly, I honestly, Corey, think it's that simple. It's it 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 boils like the the way the offense operated the last however many years being awful three years, it kind of boils down to that too. He's running the offense like an offensive lineman, not like a quarterback. He's not evaluating quarterbacks from a vantage point of being a former quarterback. He's evaluating or a wide receiver 
or a special teams or sorry, special teams, skill position player. He's evaluating like an offensive lineman who's not even looking at the quarterback when he's on the field. Now, to be, to be fair to Brian, I think maybe a little bit of context here. Spencer Petrus, Marco Linez, those guys, uh, Carson May, they were recruited by Ken O'Keefe. So, like, I, th- I think Ken O'Keefe deserves a portion of the blame if you're a fan looking for someone to blame, right? But I think what you said, just the regime of coaches, whether you're talking about Ken O'Keefe or Brian, some of it has to fall on the head coach and Kirk. Now, maybe Tim Lester will come in and sift through the mess they have at quarterback, and I do believe it's a mess right now because if Deacon Hill is taking the, the snaps with the ones, even though, yes, no one's ignoring the fact that Cade McNamara is expected to be back by fall camp, but we also can't ignore the fact that he's coming off two serious leg injuries and you know they were he wasn't all that good in his four games on the field last year. I know he was dinged up. So I, I just find this fascinating, and, and people, I don't run away from the fact that I've been an advocate for Marco Linez, especially as it relates to being an athlete and being a really good kid with high character. I really do believe that, and I hope he gets it figured out with his arm because I think from a dual threat perspective, he's as electric as I was had since maybe Brad Banks with his feet. But again, you got to be able to throw the football. So we'll see. April 20th will be some good indicators